Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be covering the case of Erin Marie Gilbert. Before we get into it, I did want to um, just put out there that tomorrow is New Year's Eve and it is going to be Carla Rebecca Corley's birthday. We talked about her a few weeks ago I'm in a video and I just wanted to point out that tomorrow was her birthday. This video will be up on Saturday for somebody, someone Saturday, but I did want to just briefly mention that before we get into what today's story is going to be about. Um, if we could just maybe think about Carla's family on her birthday. Thank you. So today's case is going to be the story of Erin Marie Gilbert. And I don't think that I mentioned it in my first video with Carla Rebecca Corley, but I am going to be going through each state and talking about somebody that went missing in each state. So we talked about Alabama last time, and now we are going to be talking about Alaska today. Warning, the following content may be considered disturbing or unsettling to certain viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is meant for informative purposes only. Hundreds of thousands of people are reported missing every year. This was just one of them. Erin Marie Gilbert was born May 4th, 1971, so at the making of this video, she'd be 50 years old. Erin Gilbert has been missing for 26 years, 5 months, and change. She was born in San Francisco, California, and actually moved to Girdwood, Alaska. And Girdwood, as I was reading, is a resort town in the southern part of Anchorage, Alaska, and they rely on a lot of tourism for their city. In 2018, they did a survey of the population and the population was around 1,742 people in the valley. So Erin moved to Alaska and she lived with her sister and her brother-in-law who was in the military and they lived on Elmendorf Air Force Base. And she got a job as a nanny working for people that her sister Stephanie knew and she really enjoyed playing basketball, really enjoyed writing, and wanted to become a novelist one day. And she also really enjoyed um, makeup and hair and wanted to go to cosmetology school. On July 1st, 1995, she went on a date with a man she had met a few days prior at a bar called Chilkoot Charlie's in Anchorage. And the man's name was David Combs. David and Aaron went to their Girdwood County Fair in Girdwood, Alaska, the Girdwood Forest Fair in Girdwood, Alaska. David and Aaron left Anchorage around 4 p.m. and Aaron was last seen at the beer garden at the fair. And David and Aaron left around 6 p.m. and according to David, they walked back to his car and they tried to start the car, but this, the car wouldn't start because he had actually left the, high, the headlights on. So leaving the headlights on killed the battery in his car and it wouldn't start. He told Aaron that he was going to go to his friend's house and get help. So he went and he actually walked around for two hours and was unable to find his friend's house. He made it back to his car and noticed that Aaron was actually gone. Aaron, he thought maybe had gone back to the fair. So he went to the fair and looked for her until about one o'clock in the morning. He couldn't find Erin at all, and at around 7 o'clock in the morning, he called her sister Stephanie and asked if Erin had actually ever made it home that night. Stephanie said no. Right away, they started to search for her. They went to the fairgrounds and looked for her, and they also checked the wooded area and didn't find anything. They found no sign of Erin of at all. Then the Alaska State Troopers actually got involved very quickly and they organized a massive search for Aaron. They looked at the fairgrounds, they looked everywhere. They used helicopters, they used search dogs, they used pretty much everything that they had to look for Aaron. And Aaron's family has described her as somebody that is responsible. She wouldn't have taken off without telling anybody where she was going. It's very uncharacteristic of her to just leave. Even though she did move around quite a bit, it, she always told people where she was going to be. It is worth noting that by the time that she went missing, Erin had actually only lived in Alaska for about a year. And when I first moved to where I live now, I don't, it took me a while to get acclimated and to learn my way around places. And I still don't go too far because I don't really know my considered a suspect in Erin's disappearance. In 2017, 
her case was actually re revisited by Lieutenant Randy McFerrin, and he has stated that we don't know for sure what happened, if this was foul play or not, we just don't know. We don't have any human remains, witnesses, we don't have a crime scene, we don't have much of anything, so it's going to be very hard. But like I said, somebody knows something. And think about all the time with these cases, somebody out there knows something and maybe they think it's such a small detail, but that small detail can mean the world to finding this person and bringing closure to their families. And Alaska, I don't know much about it. It looks so pretty. It really does look pretty. But it seems like it is, it's a very, very big place. And it seems like it's pretty easy for people to go missing. When I was looking up stories to talk about, it was, there were, there were a few and sad. Hopefully everybody is brought home. David Combs also actually refused to speak to the press when they reached out to him regarding information on Aaron's case and her disappearance. There was also a $35,000 reward offered by Aaron's family um, regarding information on her disappearance and any information to bring her closer to them, to bring her home. At the time of her disappearance, Aaron was wearing a black leather jacket, a black and white striped shirt, black jeans, and brown mountain boots. She has brown hair and hazel eyes, and her hair was also cut in a short bob style at the time. And she has a tattoo of a large blue flower on her chest. She is 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighs 145 pounds. If you have any information regarding Aaron's disappearance, please reach out to the Alaska State Troopers at 907-428-7200. 907-428-7200. Zero zero, and also nine zero seven two six nine five four nine seven. I will also put those numbers down in the description box below, as always. And if you do come across this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please keep the families in your thoughts. And if you are a praying person, please keep them in your prayers. That's usually all I ask. And then remember that at the end of the day, we are all somebody's someone. Thank you for watching.